I just found these mushrooms here in my yard and I thought this would actually be a really good opportunity to show you how to do a spore print with guild mushrooms. So uh, let's take one or two of these and take them into the shed and I'll show you how I go about doing it. Spore prints whenever it comes to identifying wild mushrooms is one of those things that you hear a lot about and while the procedure is fairly straightforward there are a few tips that I'd like to give about how I personally take a spore print. I actually got two of those nice mushrooms that were growing out there mainly because I want to use this one for the actual spore print even though as you can see this one was uh, sitting underneath this large one and the large one already deposited some spores on here but that's okay we're uh, interested in how to carry out a spore print. I uh, got this larger one right here because I kind of want to save the genetics for this. So I'm going to clone this larger one, this larger mushroom, onto some agar and use this one as the demonstration for showing how to do a spore print. Now whenever you're dealing with guild mushrooms such as these, the guild parts right here, this is the fertile surface. This is where the mushroom will deposit its spores and this is where it will release them into the environment. If all you're worried about is trying to determine the color of the spore print of the mushroom that you found, uh, you don't have to do this step, but since I want to save some of the spores for my culture collection, I'm going to actually spray this little styrofoam tray here that I actually just got at Dollar General. I, I really like these little styrofoam trays for doing like a little procedures out here just because they're a really nice shape. They're a perfect size. They're very inexpensive. 25 of them cost me exactly $1 and they're just super, super handy to have. Let me sop up as much of this alcohol as I can just to make sure that it's fairly dry and sanitized. Cause like I said, I want to save some of these spores from my culture collection and I want the samples of the spores that I get from this deposit here to be as clean as possible. Like I said, whenever you're dealing with a guild mushroom such as this one right here, the guild part right here is the fertile surface. So just to make things a little easier, we're actually just gonna cut this stalk off cause we don't need it. It is good if you're not sure of the identification of the mushroom to take note of the color of the stock, any characteristics it may have. And as you can see here on this one, the gills are free from the stock. These are not attached to the gills. So that's a fairly key piece of, of uh, observation to kind of take into consideration whenever you're trying to identify a mushroom. Now, if this was like a bleat, or if this was like a toothed mushroom, or if this was something like a polypore, the fertile surface is almost always on the underside, even if it's instead of gills, if it's pores or teeth, or even just like a smooth surface. I got some dirt on my nails, whatever. In order to get our spore print, we want to be able to lay this part of the mushroom down as flat as possible on the surface onto which we're going to have these spores be deposited. So, like I said, since we've made our observations about the stock or the stipe, we can get rid of that just for uh, ease of use and just for convenience sake. So let me get rid of that stock. Don't need that. Now that will sit down there nice and flat. Well, as flat as it can and it won't uh, be hindered by the stock. And like I said, you can already kind of see the spore color, but that's not really the point of this video. Okay, now the next step is fairly simple. Just take your mushroom, whatever kind it is, place it fertile side down. So in this case, we're placing it gill side down onto the surface of whatever it is you're using to collect the spores and observe them. And it just rained here, not, I think it rained here yesterday a little bit. Yeah, but this is just a little little tacky so what i'm actually going to do and i recommend doing this i recommend you do this as well just take a little bit of water and then just place a little bit of water on top of the cap that you have face down on the plate or uh, aluminum foil or paper or whatever you are using to take your spore print with. By placing some water on here that kind of tells the mushroom or it may at least we can trick the mushroom fruiting body into thinking hey we just had a nice rain we better put off some spores so that we can propagate our species because that's one of the main things that mushrooms look for whenever they put off their spores is one maturity they need to be mature enough to drop spores but also like they want the conditions to be as favorable as possible so they 
try to wait, if they can, for the weather to be as rainy and humid as possible before they start putting off their spores. By putting some water on top here, we're making the mushroom think that it just rained. So we should get a really, really nice heavy deposit of spores from this guy. Now, all you have to do is just wait. Let this sit here, cover it up. I do recommend covering this up. I'm just going to put another styrofoam tray over top of it. And that way it just doesn't dry out because this is, we're going to let this sit for about 12 hours, maybe 24 hours, depending on uh, the mushroom species that you have. If you check after 12 hours or so and it hasn't done anything yet, just leave it go for another 12 hours and it should put off some spores. As long as the mushroom fruiting body is in good enough shape to put off spores. If you don't have anything within 24 hours, then you're probably not going to get a spore print from it. Like I said, you don't need to use these trays. You can use a styrofoam plate. You can use uh, a piece of aluminum foil, a piece of paper. Whenever you get your uh, mushroom prepared and put down and some water put on top of it, just invert like a coffee mug or a plate or a bowl or something over it just to kind of keep that moisture kind of in this little environment here. That way it doesn't dry out and that way it stays humid and, it, and the mushroom wants to keep putting off spores. We'll just come back to this in about 12 hours, 24 hours. So I'll see you tomorrow. Now, let's see here. It has been a little over 24 hours, actually, because I worked a little late tonight. And I fell asleep whenever I got home because I was just dead. Hope it put off some spores. Should have. Now, let's see what we got. Ooh, I see them already. Ew, dude, this mushroom smells like... Smells like a radish. Oh, well. Okay, let's... Oh, yeah. Not the best spore print I've ever done, but uh, definitely enough to get the idea of what color the spores are for this particular mushroom. You can see there it put off a nice deposit of spore prints in some areas where you can actually see each distinct gill line. Yeah, you know what? That is more than enough to work with and make an identification. And it is more than enough for me to put a little bit of this into my culture collection. Probably go with this right here just because that's such a nice, heavy, uniform deposit. I kind of want some from there just because it looks like that will have the best probability of giving me a clean sample. But yeah, that's really all you have to do. Place your mushroom gill side down or pour side down or tooth side down, sprinkle a little bit of water on top of it, cover it with a cup, or in this case, we use another one of these styrofoam trays, and then just kind of hurry up and wait and let it do its thing, and eventually it will usually put off some nice spores for you to make a proper identification. Or if you just want to see what the spore print looks like. Sometimes spore prints are really, really cool looking. So like I, I'll just do this sometimes just for the heck of it to see how neat the spore print looks for certain mushrooms. But yeah, there you go. That's all you have to do. Let me know if you do this. Let me know what you thought. Happy hunting. Happy identifying. Be safe. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.